why why is it that you hardly out there because I have never seen you anywhere. <laughs> That's a tough one anyway. <laughs> but you see, see, for me, I don't believe being out there would add any value to what I'm doing. You see, uh, you know, what, I, what I'm talking about, you see, eagle. When the eagle wants to hunt, you know, it it's steadies uh, its prey, you know, and go direct straight and pick it. You know that. Mm. The sea. Yeah. If you, even they can even catch snakes, you know, yeah. turn it and pick it and turn it and go. So I focus, not being flamboyant, you know. Uh, so so mine is focus, focus, focus. You know, the fact God gave us two years. Hmm? How many maps? One. One. Why? Any reason? You know, I, I also did not know you. I know the brand Casa Preco, yes. right? And I'm a big fan of African-owned businesses. And I was tracing like African-owned beverages in Ghana and Casa Preco came. So okay. I was doing research and I'm like, who is the person behind Casa Preco? And that's how I got to know. <laughs> the, the mystic man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to know you. So I had to, I had to, re I had to reach out to uh -huh. Richard. Richard and Richard, Richard was like, you know what? It's my dad, but my dad doesn't like talking. Uh -huh. But how are we going to do it? And I'm like, Richard, you know what? You're not a story. Even if it's going to take me one year for me to get your dad, I'm going to wait. Do you know that it's been a year? Really? Trying to get you. OK. So I think Richard has done a great that job. That is quite persistence. Yeah. You, you, you are good. Yeah. I, you, can easily, you can easily succeed. Yeah. So, uh, your champion said one thing that uh, I believe uh, also motivate me. He said, it's always good to be a first class Ghanaian and a second class European. What makes you a first class Ghanaian? Because I'm a Ghanaian. By, 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 by birth. I'm proud to be a Ghanaian. You know, so if I even go and take a, a second citizenship in America, see, I'm just going to buy the citizenship. Uh, so they call me Africa American. American. Oh, I, I, I'm African American. I'm not American. So, yeah, so by definition, I'm Africa and American, you know, but here I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a villager. Mm -hmm. I want to live in a village. Eh? I live like a villager and eat what the villagers eat. You grow your own thing and eat your, your own thing, does it? So can I call you a village man? Yeah, a village man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a village man. <laughs> to be a villager, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not where you live. It's a brain. It's a brain. Uh -huh. You can be in Accra. I don't want to you know, say anything that will hurt somebody. I could be stupid, stupid. You know, so a village is your, your brain. Kwame Nrimah was from Nkrofo. Exactly. Uh, yeah, Nkrofo is a village, right? Yeah. Well, it used to be a village, but his name is all over the world now. Uh -huh. So mm. where you live, we don't choose it. You know, it's by nature, right? But what you do, you have control over it. You were born here? I was born here. I was born, I was born here. Did you for, grow up for, here? For, for, yes. For the first 13 years of my life, mm -hmm. it was here. I had never traveled anywhere but here for the first 13 years. How was childhood like, your childhood like growing up from here? Very challenging, eh? Because even here, mm -hmm. I was not living here in this cottage, this village. I was my mother and father. Only my father and my mother and myself in the middle of the forest. Middle of the forest? Uh -huh. So I used to walk about almost um, five miles in the morning to come to school here. This is where I started my schooling. On this very plot, this the, very plot. The one that you, you used to walk two hours to come? Exactly, huh, yeah. From the forest in okay, here? Yeah, huh, yeah. So it was, I think, class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, class six. This very plot. You know, and after school, I go back to the forest. Uh -huh. There's a hut. So, so, so which means when you were living in the forest, you never had electricity around? No, 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 it's a hut, a hut, a hut. One, one small hut, one small touch house. Uh -huh, yeah, only one in the middle of the forest. That's what, it's, it's still here. It's still, people are still doing that here now. You know, it's not, it's a village, right? But one man's 
cottage hut. Uh -huh, yeah, that, that's how I. Uh, how did a man who was born in a hut rise up to be who he is right now? Because the whole world knows you, it's just that they don't know the man behind the brand Casa Preco. This world, mm -hmm. this world, mm -hmm. it's a stage. That's why I said the world is a stage, right? You go to a concert party, the, the olden days. Somebody will come and perform 15 minutes and he leaves and another person comes in. So, because this world is a big stage, hmm. everybody will leave at a point in time will depart. Yeah. You know? So, why is this stage? You choose your character. Like a film, right? Yeah. You choose your character. Just like going to the stadium. The stadium, you have the VIP. Yeah. You have the popular stand, right? You know the VIP is a bit pricey. Yep. Popular stand is the common. Yeah. So you can choose to go to the VIP or can go pay to go to, a, to, the, to the popular stand. Yes. But for me, I wanted to choose the VIP. But choosing VIP is not just by mouth, but by deeds. You know, it's just like um, crossing a river. You go to a river, mm. a big stream. You have to cross. Yes. How do you cross? If you are serious, you say, oh, there's a bit, is a big river, I cannot cross. Come back. But if you are very serious, then you have to swim across it. You cannot that go and learn how to swim. Or you can go and uh, make a small uh, boat and paddle it. Or you can dive and move. But whatever you want to cross, you cross. Yes. Uh -huh. So that is why I believe Whatever you want to do, hmm. you can do it. But the fact is that it's always good to have a target in life and fail than not having a target at all. And this target I'm talking of, right, is, is like, just like a dream. We have, I think, three types of dreams. The subconscious dream. That's the one that you don't have any control over it. That one, when you dream, um, a cow is chasing you, or you are eating jorov, you don't have any control over it. Then you have a dream that is a building castle in the air. You know that you can't achieve this thing. You say, ah, I wish I, I could do this one. You know you cannot be the um, head of state of America because you don't even have a visa, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is building castle in the air, right? Then you have the effective dream. As a target, you know, so you have a, you're a dreamer. Anybody who wants to be big have a dream. You know, I want to do this before I die. That's your dream, that's your target. So that if I ask you, what's your, what's your dream? What do you tell me? So that's what has carried me over, over the years, you know. I always put targets that I want to do this within 10 years' time. You know, yes. I want to do it within 15 years' time. That's the sort of dream I'm talking of, which means I will have a target, you know, but a dream. If you have a dream, they will give you a dream legs. Wow. You want to build a solar building. How do you build a solar building? You want to buy a car. How do you buy a car? Just by mouth? No. You want to buy a car, you have to put things in place to make sure that you acquire your wealth legally. Life is war. Obra yekum. And it's true. Life is war. You know, that right now, if you go to Ukraine, the Russians are fighting the, the soldiers there. I don't, I don't think they are, they are playing draft. I don't think they are, they are, they are drinking coffee in the morning at the battlefield, you know. So if you want to succeed in life, you have to take your mantle. Uh -huh. It's hard work. There are some things that you can't escape it. Um, I, I, so far as I know, every successful person that I've seen or I've read of is a hard worker. Yeah. You think well and work hard. That's it. But being born in a forest, yes. what was your dream growing up? Well, you know, dream changes. But I didn't know that I would be like this. But I didn't also want to be poor. I told my, my mother that I, I prefer to work hard and die than being, than being poor because I was very, very poor from my beginning. I think I want a celebrity like this 
when I was about 10 years, I never put on bathroom sandals for my first 10 years. Never, never. You know, so I was walking through the forest to school here you know, on barefoot with my cloth, not even with a sort like this, no. With my, is it collar? Yeah, collar. And then, uh, you know, we are many people scattered around the forest. Um, children, okay, this person is here, this person could be there, this man was there, I mean, the, the, the young, what, say eight years, nine years. Hmm. Yes. So at a point, we all meet at the Johnson and we go to come back to school here. You know, so we, like we walked about convoy, let's say seven kids walking through the forest to the village here. Uh, how many minutes yeah. they have to walk yeah, from? Yes. Oh, yeah, let's say about um, two hours. Yeah. You walk for two hours before you get to school? Yeah, sure. I don't know if you go to school, but go to, yeah, yeah. It's not like a village here. No, it's far away. It's a forest. How did you manage to pay the fees? Your mother will pay that uh, peanut uh, this uh, for you, yeah. But uh, sometimes, for me like this, when I went to the <laughs> school, when I go to school in Asin mm -hmm. you don't know anybody. And this one, it looks as if uh, it's like a fairy, fairy tale. You don't know anybody. But when the school vacates and you, you go into the school next, next academic year, you go to the village, you go to the next city without knowing anybody, right? And people will call you. So they want people to come and work with them, uh -huh. to go and stay with them. So they'll be like, sort of a liberal type of thing. Mm. Yeah, so go and stay with somebody that you don't never know. You um, ever did that? Yeah, yeah, I did it. That's, that's how I was. So for me, I was, I was with um, a job bar uh, maker. So I used to pan for food before I go to school. When I went to Asenregua. And that was, that was very, very good life. <laughs> yeah, after all, you get some food to eat in the morning, or and, cassava, uh, and soup before you go to, go to, before you go to school. Did you complete school? I completed elementary school, yes, sure. Which is? Um... The, 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 the first 10 years, that's a very form four. Hmm. Yeah. That's the highest level? No, no, you could go to senior school. But if that, you have the money. But I didn't have it. So when I was in form two, yeah, form two, I sat for a criminal justice examination. I, I remember that only five people passed that year. The whole thing was a big city. I don't know what yeah, that, I don't know the big town. I think I was only about six, seven school at that time. Only five kids were able to pass that year common trans. I was one. A big that, round of applause. Yes. <laughs> I came to my mother. Uh -huh. but no money. No money. In fact, I, that time I had a CMB scholarship. They, they wrote to me that they gave me CMB half scholarship. Right? So if you go and you do well, you get a full scholarship. But how could I go? You can't afford a half scholarship. No, no, I can't afford it. So I have to continue um, from three. It was very, very heartbreaking for me. Seeing my, my, my colleagues who were very brilliant going and going to the form three. Form three, I suffered a common trust again. Knowing very well that I won't go. You know, I, I, I will not get money to go. But, you know, for the fact that you have passed the common trance, you know, uh -huh, it's something that was motivating me. You know, I said I'll pass. I knew I'll set our pass. And all my teachers knew our, our pass. So when we were going for our last final year examination, that is a middle form four, mm. our, our headmaster, he's called Mr. Master Men here, Men here from Master Murphy, he told me that we are only we are our only hope for detention. We don't get detention, not can be a result. And because I knew I knew our pass, me, I knew our pass. I, I was very brilliant at school. Uh -huh. But that also motivated me to move a bit higher. You know, wow. but when I pass, as I speak here to you now, I never went for my certificate. I never, because I thought I didn't deserve it. I wanted something higher, but no money. I thought I was, I was brilliant, but I didn't have anybody to help me, right? Hmm. So when I finished the form four, the form four, I was employed as a, a family brother, a family brother. But I was staying with somebody. Uh, that person said I should go and learn Bokanaza. Bokanaza? Yeah. But I said, I don't like Bokanaza. I don't, I don't want to be a Bokanaza, right? Mm. Uh -huh. So I was employed as a family brother mm. at uh, Agric, right? Yeah. So that's where, at a point in time, I had to run away. 
my sister from Accra came to the village. You know, it's a short period. Came to the village. My sister, I'd like to go to, with you to Accra. I said, okay. If, if you want to go, let's go. So, off. I, I left with her to Accra. Mm. She was a, she was a, a house girl. So I left without knowing what I was going to do. But my brother was also a garden man in Accra. So you know garden men, they know a lot of people. People. Uh -huh, yes. Introduced me to somebody to be his uh, houseboy. Yes. And he was the managing director of Gihok at that time. He was in the yeah. So uh, I was a houseboy for some time. And then the, um, the wife was working with uh, 37 military hospital as a soldier, a major. So when I left the houseboy work, mm. I went to one of the soldiers, Major Khan. I could remember very, very well. That Major Khan, my madam was not treating me well, so can you employ me? I said, no, I can't employ you. But uh, there's one thing that I can do for you. My friend had got a beer bar in Tema. So you can go and be a bar attendant. Yeah, so uh, I went to Tema as a bar attendant. But wow. he told me that, uh, I, I asked her that I would like to be the soldier, because they were soldiers, Major Khan, you know, and the, the, the woman that I was staying with, the other soldier, I was in Burma camp, 37 minutes hospital, uh, as a high boy. So now I had the, the interest of being a soldier, right? So I said, Madam, I would like to be uh, an Air Force soldier. I knew the infantry, what they do, and Air Force. I, I said, yeah, yeah, so that's okay. What is education level? I said, okay, I'm a middle school level certificate holder. So if you go to the, the soldier as a this for certificate, it took you a long time before you will rise up. So why don't you do correspondent course? I said, what is correspondence course? <laughs> then he gave me the contact number of Institute of, Institute of Adult Education, okay. Legon. Okay. Uh -huh. So it is the beginning of my education. I was doing online courses with them. He gave me the subject to, 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 to read, you know, economics, geography, you know, English, mathematics. So when I was doing that, you know, I was also at the bar at the same time, mm. tending to the bar. You know. So I did a bar for about almost a year and a half. I saw that, yeah, I, mean, I saw that uh, there was this um, advertisement in the papers, you know, enrolling soldiers. So I went to my madam in Accra. Madam, I wanted to be a soldier, but you said I should go to the bar. So at least, could you help me to even be a bar at the soldier, so the, the, the mess, instead of being the, uh, yeah, the mess? Yeah. So your madam said, we are so good. So now the idea of being a soldier had been cancelled. You know, so you be at the bar attendant for about five, six, eight, ten years, and your mother said she will give you, your madam said she will give you money to go and do some farming. I said no. In that case, then uh, I cannot continue with the with the bar thing. So I left. After some time, being in the street, I had a, I had a job as a cashier, cashier laborer at Varco. Hmm. So eventually, I was made permanent at Varco. So when I was made permanent at Varco. Because their buses were going, going to Accra, bringing workers to uh, work. So I then enrolled with Accra Workers College. You know, so when I closed from work, then I go to Accra Workers College. So then I was doing two tuition. I had uh, stopped the correspondent course. I was still doing the correspondent course and also going for the face to face. Uh, that made me become very popular at the school. Hmm. You know, here at the, even, even, um, Workers College, they called me one day. I remember they called me one day to interview me. No, I mean the Institute of Education. I interviewed me whether I had been to French school, I dropped out because of my uh, results, that my scripts, you know, because they knew I was doing very, very well. They give me the, 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 the papers, I, I do it, push it back to them, 
the market are selling to me, but I was doing actually double tuition. So sometimes what I would do, I've already done it with a face to face. So, uh -huh. so that is how I had my education. So after my GCE, in fact, they were encouraging me to go to the university. Mm. I, I knew I could easily go. I knew because I for the book knowledge. You had it. I had it. No, no compromise about it. I knew, I knew I had it. And all my, my colleagues knew I was brilliant. So education was not an issue at all. Well, why didn't you go then? Well, at the point, I started doing small, small trading. Uh, small, small trading. And uh, the trading took a better part of myself. Because I was making money in the trading. I was working. And I could remember that my three days of duty trading eh, could equivalent my one month salary. I said, oh no, then I don't have to waste my time because I wanted to be an accountant. I, 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 accountant. You know, the way the accountant dresses, their tie, the banks, you know, that I was interested. Now I've abandoned the, the military. So I wanted to be now an accountant. accountant. Yes. But when I, when, I started the, the, when I started trading, that time there was scarcity in Ghana. So then I go to Togo to go and bring goods, you know, and then I credit it to my colleagues, you know, colleagues, back workers, you know, so if you need soap, credit, if you need milk, because that time was, uh, what do you call it, communities, no, there's nothing in the, in the country, I, I, don't, I don't know, we didn't experience no, it no, that no, time, no. yes, no. there was virtually nothing, even bread, you could not get bread to buy in Ghana, in the Lawrence era, at the point of Lawrence era, uh -huh, yes, scarcity, you know, so everything was scarce at that time. So I go and buy provisions, hmm. milk, sugar, uh, other things I come and give to my, my friends on credits, you know, and then I collect it. I collect the, the money at the end of the month. That's what I used to do. So now, when, when I, I, I close from work, sometimes I, 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 in the afternoon, I go there to buy goods and come back. I come to, the, I come, I go to work there for the morning. Yeah, sometimes I wake up very early in the morning, right? By three o'clock, first, first bus. When I'm on after afternoon shift, right? So I go and buy the goods. When I come, I don't go to house, but to my house. I just join the bus and go to work. You know, so like now, enterprising, mm. business, trade yeah. yeah, so that's why I started doing business. So because of that one, I didn't, I didn't last too much, too long in the, the uh, formal uh, employment. Exactly. You know, because my three days, you know, and make more money than than uh, it went to the whole month. So I said, no, come on, I, I don't have to waste, waste my time. How I made my money, I'll tell you this story. <laughs> because I was on the, on the street for some time. Yeah. It toughened me up, right? So just imagine you being on the street for some time with, with guys, you, 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 and then getting a formal employment. That's easier. Easy. <laughs> because I have friends now. Yeah. So in the morning, oh, Charlie, you, you brought, uh, you brought um, Kenke, I'll come and eat. So when I, when I joined the Vaco, we made Susu. Susu. And uh, I think, Susu that you made, you take all the money this month. Mm. It's for you. All, 100%, right? The next month you is for this person. person. And next month, so I was the last person to take it. So I think about the seventh month, I took also the money. That's how I get the money to be trading. That, that is the story. And that's the money that I had Till today hasn't left me. And not that I had money from a loan from anybody. That's just that, that, that I had. That's just money. Uh -huh, that I had. You know, that's how I've nurtured it from, from that time to this time that money has never left my hand. That's how I, uh, if you say worth, that, that's Doc, how I came at it. Doc, I, I want to ask you this question. Uh -huh. yeah. Are you a billionaire? No, I'm not. I'm not a billionaire. You I'm, are. Not, I'm not even, I don't know. As for wealth, mm -hmm. I, I can't say I'm a rich man. No, I can't say I'm a rich man. Then who are you then? I'm an I'm I'm average man. <laughs> I, I, average person, yes. Yeah, yeah. Doc, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's, it's all about a mindset. Yeah, yeah, because, because if I say I'm rich, yeah. right? If mm. I can't say, I call myself I'm, mm. I'm, I'm rich. So I, was in, I was in America, yeah. right? America, they have billionaires, dollars, right? So if you have some CDs, say you're a billionaire, you know? Africa, apart from uh, Dangote, who is who's rich in Africa? Nobody. The fact I know, and some few South Africans. Ghana, who is rich in Af Ghana? We are not, no. This two by four money that we have, no. 
you know. So if you go and meet the actual billionaires in America, they made a lot of dollars in a month, not hours. So for me, I don't see myself as a rich person. If I want to be rich, I should have stayed in America, right? And because in America, I was in the real estate business. You know, I happen to have, for me also, the fact God also helps me. Happen, to, happen I don't know what I'm jumping again. Happen to have some friends who are Jews, you know, and they introduced me to how to make money in America. You know, not to steal, right? But they know that uh, if you do this, you will make this money. If you do this, you make, you know, can you believe that I was the landlord of the, uh, of the biggest pharmacy in, in, in America. What took you to America? My children. Hmm? My, children my children. You see, uh, for me, I don't joke with my children. That's why they're able to take over my business. You know. Wow. So wherever my children are, that's you where want to be there. I want to be there. You know, so that I can police policy. Because America is a very dangerous place. America is a very dangerous place that if you rear people children in America, mm -hmm. we are not careful. Because of their system, we lose them. And once you lose an American boy, he's gone, forever. gone forever. Forever and ever. Because we say one, he's eaten. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But if I was with them, Mm -hmm. I still control them as Africans. Okay. Uh -huh. So you go out, you sleep at this time, come at this, this time. You know, it's because people, see, why is it that people um, who are rich, I mean, they are able to uh, train their children well. Their, their children, are, most of them are true ones. They don't have time for their children. But there's, there's money here, right? And there's family here. We have to balance it. See? If you concentrate too much on the money aspect, you lose, you lose your family. So, so many business people have lost their, 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 their children because they are always on the money, 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 right? So, we have to balance it, you know. So, that's how I reared my, my, I train my children. I train them. We asked Richard at the point, say, Dad, I, I, I stopped the work. Richard, I want to stop the work. He said, Dad, Dad yes, I, I, I can't work again. Why? Say, too much pressure. Richard, you got him. I said, no, Richard, too much pressure. And so we are leaving the work. We are a man. Challenge yourself. I give you too much pressure. You don't know what I've gone through. You can do it. So do it. I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. You know. So a lot of people give goodies to their children, right? Without a moral training. Without instilling that sort of discipline in the in children. The children. You know, so at the end of the day, you have money, but you have real your children. So if you are no more there, they can't succeed you. You, you. you bring the business up, you die, your company dies. You bring a company up, you get sick, or get stroke, your company gets stroke. Because I have not trained any vibrant successor. Uh -huh. And that's what I didn't want to do. So when they were schooling, I was with them in America. You know, I thought I was going to be with them, but when I went, you know, as a businessman, I said, oh, why can I be here without doing business? So I started you know, knocking doors. Uh -huh. Fortunately, with the ugly, some doors opened to me. That's how I was able to uh, go to America to start my business there. Oh,